Good morning. I'm Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub. I'm here to uh, make an additional announcement of additional charges against Choir Director Joseph Ort, who worked in the Central Bucks School District for decades. Uh, on February the 8th of 2022, the defendant, age 56, of Buckingham was arrested on charges that included wiretap act violations, invasion of privacy, and tampering with evidence. I believe that that was previously reported on, but for sake of continuity, I wanted to go into that, and then I'll go into the new charges. The facts in that first complaint are that in late 2021, a young male who had been living with the defendant, Ort, came to Central Box Regional Police Department with a number of items that Ort had asked him to dispose of after the defendant was aware that we were investigating him for child molestation. The police reviewed the evidence and found secret recordings of a victim, including one showing the victim in the nude. The victim was not aware that he was being non-consensually audio and video recorded. The victim in that case graduated from CB West High School in 2016 and lived with the defendant after high school in 2017 approximately while he was in college. The victim had been in the defendant's choirs while a Central Buck School District student. Following that arrest, detectives from the Central Bucks Regional Police Department and the Bucks County District Attorney's Office received numerous tips about additional molestation that the defendant may have committed, sadly. As a result of those tips, we investigated further. And resulting from those tips today, we charged the defendant with two counts of indecent assault and two counts of corruption of minors for his predation on two different victims. The defendant was arraigned this morning on those charges by Magisterial District Judge Mark Dupel, and his bail was set at 100,010%. He was at large on a prior bail on the first set of charges. The additional conditions of today's bail are that the defendant surrender his passport, that he, know, that he have no contact with his victims, and that he have no unsupervised contact with children under the age of 18. <clears throat> I'd like to go into the facts of the second complaint that we filed today. The defendant perpetrated these crimes on each of his two additional victims about five years apart in the 1990s. So his crimes now span decades. But in this instance, it was while each was a student of his and between the ages of 11 and 13 years old. The defendant indecently assaulted his first 11-year-old male victim in 1991. In this instance, this victim reported to the police that the defendant touched his penis at Linden Elementary School while at school where the defendant was, a, was his music teacher at the time. The defendant indecently assaulted his second male victim who was 13 years old during the 1995-96 school year. This victim reported to police that the defendant put his hand down the victim's pants and touched an intimate area of his body while at the defendant's residence in Doylestown Township in Bucks County. This defendant has been an educator with Central Bucks School District since 1987. And he most recently was the choir director at Central Bucks High School West. He is currently on leave from the school district. I anticipate that he will never teach at Central Buck schools ever again. And I would note that the Central Buck School District administration has been extremely cooperative with this investigation. Over his tenure with Central Buck School District, the defendant taught at the following Central Buck schools, and I have a long list here, so bear with me. Kutz, Linden, Buckingham, Doyle, Gaiman, all elementary schools, Unami, Taminant, middle schools, and Central Bucks West High School. The defendant was also involved at summer fun camps in 2016, 17, and 2019 at Cold Spring Elementary School and Central Bucks South High School. 
Obviously, I hope and I pray that the defendant has not victimized any other children in the preceding decades. But I have a genuine concern that my prayers won't be answered. And that's the reason for this press conference. We want to know if you or somebody that you know has been victimized by this man. Just as when we filed the first set of charges, two additional victims got their courage, become brave enough to tell us their truths. We are prepared to receive more reports like that from you. If you or somebody you know has been victimized by this man, Joseph Ward, it's okay to speak your truth to us now. Please contact either Central Bucks Regional PD Detective Sergeant Paul Cruder at 215-348-4143 or Bucks County Detective Greg Beidler at 215-340-8216. Or you can leave a tip at bucksda.org. Those tips can even be anonymous, and I promise you we will run down every lead. This case is being prosecuted by ADA Brittany Kern. And I urge you all to please join these brave victims who've already spoken their truths. We will seek justice for you and for our community. For this defendant and his victims, justice has been a long time coming, but I promise you it's not too late. I'll take some questions at this time. All right, great. I thank you all. Oh, oh yes. Does Dr. Ward have uh, one of his own uh, biological children? Does, does he have children? A biological child, yes. Uh, he may or may not. I just don't think it's fair to comment. That person, if, if, if exists, is not one of our reported victims. You said he's been teaching since the 80s. Yes. If there are victims from the 80s, them coming forward, where are the statute of limitations at this point? With That's a great question. Would still be helpful? Well, so I would not prejudge statute of limitations. That's always a concern. The law has really been favorably changed. Uh, to allow to be more inclusive and even the victims from the 90s are included within the prosecutorial statute of limitation. So even if there is a victim from the 80s, please come forward. Your, vo your voice has value. We want to hear what you have to say and we'll make the determination on whether we can prosecute on a case by case basis. In here it talks about how a student went to a guidance counselor back has more information from the district to come forward, granted we know mandatory reporting has changed quite a bit. So have, have they been able to go back and see if there are others that express concern or if that was the only one that went to the district? Uh, I would say it's, it's not fair to judge or indict somebody by rumor and innuendo, Deanna, but uh, the, the school administration has been incredibly cooperative, helpful, and transparent. I know that the mandatory reporting laws have changed with relatively recently compared to these allegations within the past decade but that they have been incredibly cooperative uh, and anything any detailed data records that we've asked for they provided to us i don't know that they would have had a retroactive requirement to mandatorily report something that ha happened before the mandatory reporting took place yes you Minute. mentioned that uh Prior to the first case, it, there was already an investigation, or he was aware there was an investigation of molestation. Just to be clear, the people who are part of the indictment today, they came forward after the initial charge. You got it. You got it. As is often the case uh, when, when we file a criminal complaint of this nature, uh, we always hope and pray there are no, no additional victims. But in this case, as is often the case, victims are spurred to come forward because they see that we are uh, making a case against this particular person who molested them as well. Sure, I guess my question then is, uh, how did he first come to your attention as a potential suspect in a molestation case? Uh, we had heard a lot of speculation and uh, information that we needed to run down. And so we, we took a really, really hard investigative look at this man and some of his contacts and as a result of that 
we were able to file that first set of charges in February. If you look at those charges, they're kind of unique because they don't allege actual molestation on a minor, uh, but through some, some great investigation and some creative charging, we were able to charge him with some crimes that he, in fact, uh, we allege had, has committed. And as a result of that, not surprisingly, we do have now some concrete allegations that he, maleged, he, he molested young people in the 90s. But that original investigation starting point Yes, it's been my experience, and I don't want to comment specifically on this case because the future is unwritten. I don't know what's going to happen as a result of this press conference, but it's been my experience that when you have um, one, one set of charges that relate to this type of conduct uh, actually lodged against a defendant, more people find their courage to come forward. The, the proverbial dam then breaks. Uh, and, and that is at least what has happened with respect to the two other victims that have now come forward. And if more come forward, this is, this is the time. We will support you. We will get you victim services. We'll get you treatment. We'll get you therapy. And we will help guide you through this process. Does he have any opportunity to post bail? Or is that he, he, uh, he, he did post bail on his original set of charges. And I understand that he was preparing to post bail on this most recent set of charges as well. So he will be at liberty on bail, I anticipate. Matt, have, have you been the subject of any uh, investigation of similar allegations over the past 30 years prior to the uh, I couldn't say. I, it, I, I don't want to condemn him. I, I couldn't say. Okay. So I don't want to speculate. Anybody else? All right. Thank you all. I appreciate your patience.